with us here on the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mozak. It's a pleasure to be back in the studio today with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. And boy, do we have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to answer a question that I know is on a lot of people's minds. So stay tuned for that. Plus, we're going to be telling you more about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are like master's level courses, and they are central to your success in retirement. We want you to attend. We're going to be telling you how to get registered, how to reserve your spot. These do fill up quickly, these courses. So be listening for ways to do that. These are held at major universities. Wherever you're listening to our program, we make it easy for you to get registered. Kirk Paul, great to be back with you. The question that's on so many people's minds right now, are we in a recession? Are we nearing a recession? What's going on right now? Well, you know, I'll let Paul define what a recession is, and it depends on, you know, <laughs> it depends on who's trying to define it and describe it. Here's what we'll say. Whether it is a recession or we had a major market event this past year, there was a major event. And for people who are approaching retirement or in retirement, these major market events or recessions happen to occur every on average, four to seven years. So if you think about a 30-year retirement, this is going to happen three, four, five, six, seven times throughout your retirement. And really, the question is, are you prepared for those events? How should you behave when those events occur? And what does data tell us how you will behave during those events? And and that's the problem. We know how most people will behave when this happens in retirement. And we need to fix and change how, that, how we'll behave when those, those major market events do occur, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, this is a topic that it just seems like, really, I think it's always on people's minds, but especially since the pandemic. But, I mean, we, we get this question all the time in class, right? Every time we teach a class, Everyone wants to know, are we in a recession? Are we going into a recession? What should we do if we end up in a recession? Again, I, I think this topic is really important. I, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, if we're going to answer the question, first of all, I think, you know, different economists have different opinions. But, Kirk, I would say most economists now say we're not. But there's sure a lot of people that are concerned that we will end up being in one, um, given all the things with interest rates and the, what the feds are doing. But... It's still on everyone's mind, and, and, and I think it's still really important to help people know how to prepare for it when you retire, because obviously that's a big deal. Paul, I think, you know, candidly, as is, is we're sitting here talking about this, I think that those people who are in retirement or approaching, nearing retirement, really, it really is irrelevant whether you define it as a recession or if it, anyone ever describes it. The recession isn't the issue. It's the major market event right? Forget the recession. It's just a major market event. And I know that happened last year in 2022. I know we had a major market event. I know that most people's 401ks on average were down 23 to 25%. I know that most people that had a growth tilt were down over 30%. I know that people that were overweighted into bonds were down 25, 30%. I know that 60-40 portfolios, 60% stocks, 40% bond portfolios were down 18-ish percent. So whatever we want to call it, in retirement, major market events are going to occur. And what we want to talk about is how do we plan for these events and recognize nobody can predict these. Nobody knows. Look, if you keep saying or predicting we're going to have a recession, eventually you're going to be right. And maybe we'll talk about this next segment, how people predict and they just say, oh, I was just early. That means you were wrong. If you're managing money and you think we're going to about to hit a recession, those people are going to reposition your portfolios for those recessions. And if they're a year or two late, they were wrong. Not early. They were wrong. So most importantly, how do you manage and navigate through these major market events? Well, you need to understand how to build a plan. What a real retirement plan looks like, that's what our eight-hour courses are. We, we teach at all the major universities in, in your areas. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
You know, Kirk, you said something earlier, and I, I think it's it would be it's important maybe to quantify just for a second. I mean, basically, one of the the main points is over your retirement, assuming you live, you know, a reasonable number of years in retirement, you're going to experience a lot of huge market events. And just put a number on it: since World War II, the economy has uh, about every five years we have a recession, right? About every five years. So I think you said, I don't know the number you said, five, six, seven mar- huge mar- negative market events over your retirement. I mean, it, we're not talking about one or two, right? We're talking about a lot. So whether we're in a re- recession now, whether we're going to be in a recession now, the point is you will have to experience negative market events throughout your retirement and learning how to navigate, learning what to do, what not to do, which is m- more important, is key and, and, and we spend a lot of time in our classes helping people figure that out and, and really how to build a plan so that you are prepared for it. I mean, if I could say one more thing, I, I think, you know, every show we talk about basically how do you help people in retirement. And I think one really important thing to do is always anticipate bad things happening. Because during your retirement, there are going to be things that are going to happen. And if you anticipate them and you plan for them before they happen, you're just going to be much better prepared when they do happen. I think that's the secret everyone's looking for, right? And unfortunately, and we'll talk more about this as the show goes on, the financial service industry has not positioned themselves well with their messaging or what makes them most profitable to help people manage these types of events. I mean, they really believe that they can manage through portfolio management, and that isn't the appropriate way. The other way they'll tell you to manage is you have to reduce your spending and cut back during difficult times in market events. And that's crazy. You spent, look, you guys have spent 30, 40 years of your life serving money, working to save up enough to have the freedom in retirement to do the things you've been putting off. And so to allow a short-term market event, change your spending behaviors is crazy when we know markets always recover. And if we just have the appropriate plans in place, so when they do happen, that you don't have to adjust your lifestyle, change your spending patterns, change anything about your life. To do that, I promise you it's going to require a lot more education. And you're going to start You're going to start by attending one of these eight-hour classes that we're teaching at most of the major universities in your area, University of Michigan, Oakland, Michigan State, uh, Universities of Missouri, all over the place. So register. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's much more on the Retirement Education Hour coming up next. Back in the studio today with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul are with the Retirement Education Foundation. And the foundation sponsors courses that we want you to know about and we want you to get registered for. These are deep dives into retirement planning, essential to a successful retirement here in the 21st century. They're held at major universities. Wherever you're listening today, we have locations for you, and we want you to attend. Here's how to register. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up the phone and call if you'd like to register that way. The phone number is 800 240 8981. Again, that's 800 240 8981. Register today. Make sure you reserve your spot. Seats do fill up quickly. We want you there so that you can get the information, the knowledge, the education around planning your ideal retirement. It does not happen by chance. You can meet financial instructors just like Kirk and Paul, and they can help you on your road to and through retirement. So get registered. Today, we've been talking about recessions on the show today. Is your retirement prepared for a recession? And we started out by just trying to understand what environment we're in, Kirk and Paul. Are we in a recession? What is a recession? Let me ask you this. Is it even possible to predict a recession? Well, there's a lot of experts that have that make these predictions, right? And so if you keep predicting, eventually you'll be right. We know that. What's most common is that people make these predictions and within a year, two, three, four years, 
Then it eventually, ha- it's going to eventually happen. We know on average every five to seven years we have a major market event or a recession that's going to occur. We know that. So if you just predict enough, you're eventually going to be right. The, here's the challenge. is it, it drives me crazy when people in the financial service industry say, you know, I predicted a recession and I was just a year early or I was a year or, or two years early. That means you were wrong because remember, the financial service value proposition, their greatest value proposition that they promote is that they can stock pick market time and predict what's going to happen with the economy and the markets. That is what they claim to be so good at, right? And so if they predict there's a recession coming and it doesn't happen for a year or two, they just weren't early. They were wrong because if they're managing money, they would have adjusted the portfolios to anticipate that major market event, that recession. And what we've learned over the, for many, many years is that we often have the best bull runs in the markets just before a major market event and just after a major market event. So when they're early and they get defensive, they are missing some of the greatest market uh, timing in the history of the markets. That's, that's when they've had, we've seen the greatest appreciation. So this idea that you can predict your way or manage your money around these um, events, particularly in retirement when you're most emotional, when you're most vulnerable and no one else is sending you a paycheck, is, is silliness. We're going to talk about what some of the solutions are. And, and I'll tease it right now. It's not trying to stock pick in market time. It's actually income planning. It's pivoting where you take your income from when we have these major market events that you're going to have a ton of throughout retirement. So don't change your investments. You change where you're pulling your income from to live on. And if you do this properly, Paul, right, if they do this properly, you won't have to change your lifestyle. You won't have to reduce your spending. You don't have to drive yourself crazy on who should I trust or who should I listen to about the market and the market conditions. All you'll have to do is pivot to different accounts to pull your income from when we do have the major market events. So now we're not predicting or guessing or pretending to know when things are going to happen in the market, Paul. Yeah, you know, and I I don't think people appreciate, you know, I think people think they go in and out. I don't think people appreciate the impact of missing the best market days. I think people don't understand that if you miss some of the best big days in the market, it has a substantial impact impact long-term on the value of your investments. What are the statistics, Kirk? Throw out, this, throw out the numbers. So, Paul, if you, missed, if you missed 30 of the best days since 2000, you have a negative return in your portfolio right now. And what we know is the best days in the market occur right after a major market event and right before a major market event. So, that, that's crazy. You, you can't... When you say negative, compare that to... What happens if you're in the market and you don't So since, since 2000, if you just bought the index, the S&P 500, and you invested a million dollars today, you would have over $6 million. It's over a 500% return if we're reinvesting the dividends. It is ridiculous to try to stock pick in market time. None of you need to do this. And now if the, if, if, if the public really understood this, then the financial service industry would be in a lot of trouble if they realized investing as easy as just buying an index, especially when you're young, (laughs) what would they do? Now, now I don't want to oversimplify retirement because retirement planning is a very different game. And there's like 30, 40 different levers to pull. It's about income planning. It's about tax planning. It's about setting up the right accounts in anticipation of future events. We know we're going to have major market events. We don't know when they're going to occur. So we have to set up some accounts that are defensive, maybe not earning anything or something very little so that we can pivot to those accounts when we have these major market events. Yeah, you know, I think think people don't appreciate the hardest thing is it's easy to know when to go out of the market. It's very difficult to know when to go back in a market. I think that's, that's the piece. You have to make two good decisions. Most people don't get it right, right? Most people figure out the, how to get out, but they have no idea how to get back in. Paul, I love that you mentioned that because maybe that's what we'll talk about next segment is when we have a major market, a recession, 
what percentage of retirees panic. We have the data, and it will blow you guys away, particularly those who haven't retired yet or just early in retirement. You're going to behave differently. I promise you, no matter how bright, intelligent, sophisticated you CEOs, CFOs, CPAs, attorneys, I know how smart you guys are, but we also have the data, and we know how you're going to behave. It's not how you think you're going to behave. So attend one of our eight-hour courses. They're taught at all the major universities in your area, just about all the universities in your area. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That donation goes to charity. So if you'd like to attend one of our eight-hour classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return plenty more straight ahead with Kirk and Paul. Stay with us. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. We're going to get back to our topic today. We're talking about recessions and can your retirement withstand a recession We've been defining it. Are we in one? Can you predict them? A lot of questions we know are on your minds today about that. And we've got another great resource for you to help you gain more confidence as you get closer to that retirement finish line. We want you to be in attendance at the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are like master's level courses on retirement planning, and these are held at major universities wherever you're listening. So if you're listening today in the state of Missouri, we have many locations at major Missouri universities and colleges. If you're in Michigan, these are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. You can attend by calling or going online. Here's that web address. It's retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number is 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800-240-8981. We're going to get back to our program today. Speaking of the show, you're welcome to download this program and many, many others from our library. You can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. And don't forget to click subscribe. That way you never miss an episode. So back to recession today, I saw a statistic, Kirk and Paul, 35% of baby boomers, they panicked regarding their investments during COVID. Tell me what was going on in their minds at that moment. I know there was a lot of uncertainty. Well, Megan, actually, that's not uncommon. And I think this is where particularly baby boomers who have done so well financially with their investments since the financial crisis who've gotten really overconfident in their abilities. And, they, and and many of them, they didn't panic during 2008 during the financial crisis because they were younger. And oh, by the way, someone was sending them a paycheck every two weeks to pay their bills. That is not the case once you retire. You have to send yourself your own paycheck. And as we experienced, we saw during COVID, March, March during COVID at the bottom when the market was at its worst position possible. 35% of baby boomers panicked and they missed the best 52 day run in market history. They missed it because they panicked right at the bottom. During the financial crisis, those people over the age of 65 and who were retired, 60% of the people panicked with their investments, panicked. Many of them are still not even back in the market. That's and they missed the greatest decade in the history of the stock market. The, this, this, you can go back in history, statistically speaking, the amount of people who panic during major market events once you are retired because as you get older, I think people struggle with this, Paul. Think of your parents or think of your grandparents. And I know what you can say. Well, I'm more sophisticated. I'm more educated. There's more technology and resources. I won't react and behave like they did as they age. No, you will. Because as you age, cognitively things change. You get more scared. You become more vulnerable. And that's all the money you have for the rest of your life. You have to trust us if you don't really get educated and really have a plan and understand what the plan does and how you're, you're supposed to be, respond during market events, you're going to panic, period. Paul, you're the psychologist. No, you understand no, you, this better than all of us. 
yeah, no, I, I think you hit it. And I think you said something and you said it sort of quickly. And I think we just need to highlight a point. And I think data really is helpful. So if you go back past the past 30 years and you look at the 10 best trading days in terms of percentages gained, okay, all 10 took place during a recession, six of those during a bear market, and three of them, three of them during the 2020 recession. So those 35% that went out, they missed three of the best 10 days in terms of percentage gains. They missed it. And as you said earlier, you missed those big gains. It has a, a long-term implication in terms of, you know, how much money you're going to have in the future. So you, you can't time this. You can't go in and out. You go in and out, you're going to miss the best days. And, and I think this is something you said, and we see this all the time when we meet people in the classes. It's, you know, people love to brag. Well, you know, I got out of the market before, before the recession got really bad. And you ask them, okay, where are you at now? And they're still in cash. They never got back in, right? But it's easy to get out of the market. It's really difficult, especially psychologically, to know when to go back in. And most people, they're so afraid to go back in, they stay on the sidelines, and they continue to miss the best days. And, and you know, that just doesn't work in retirement. So if, if you're driving in your car right now or listening to the podcast on your, on your, uh, on your phones or at home listening on your computer, however you're listening to us, you're, you, you stop and think about some of the things we're, we're trying to teach you and say to you. First, it's, it's not conventional wisdom, right? It is not the message that you are consistently getting from the financial service industry. And you start, to, start to think about why are, what, is, what, are they, what is their motivation to share this data and give this information? And if you've been listening to us long enough, it's not about trying to create any fear, it's about providing you education. If you attend one of these eight-hour courses, what you're going to learn is we're essentially taking eight hours. And, and it's eight hours because it's master's level course. We're going to walk you through a retirement plan that takes about 50 to 60 hours to build if you are a CFP, a CPA, an expert. So this is advanced planning we're going to teach you. But it's also about the the psychology, the how you are going to behave and react in retirement and how do we help you to manage that most effectively. Really, it's eight hours, and I hate to say it, but we're trying to reprogram the nonsense, the noise, the BS that the financial service industry has been feeding you for the last 30, 40 years so that you can spend more money in retirement, spend more, spend 6 7 8% withdrawal rates, not 3 or 4%. To retire earlier, to pay a lot less taxes, and to get you through retirement without changing your lifestyle during major market events. That is the whole purpose of this radio show. It's the whole purpose of the charity, the Retirement Education Foundation, and it's the whole purpose of our eight-hour courses. Now, look, these eight-hour courses are intense. It's a 200-page textbook. We teach them either in two evenings or one full Saturday. And we have a many, many, many high net worth, super advanced Fortune 500 executives who prefer to stream the class <laughs> instead of attending the class while we're teaching it live at the university. So you can stream them and watch it while we're teaching at the university. If you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back in a moment with Kirk and Paul right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, I'm glad you're here on the show. I'm Megan Mozak, and I'm alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are held at major universities and colleges. If you're listening today from Missouri, welcome. We're glad you're here. We have a number of universities and colleges in your area, and they're hosting these courses. These are deep dives into all things retirement planning. Maybe you're listening from Michigan. We have several universities there, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University's two campuses, both Novi and Troy, or Oakland University, 
So we make it convenient, easy for you to attend. You can call or go online to get registered and reserve your spot. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And this show and so many others can be accessed Wherever you find your podcasts, be sure to search for Retirement Education Hour. You can re-listen to this show or any others in the library, share with a friend, search for Retirement Education Hour, and be sure to subscribe. We want you to be in the know. That's what it's all about. So Kirk and Paul, as we've been talking about recession today here on the program, I want to talk about asset allocation. This is something we hear about all the time, but you say the danger is in thinking about asset allocation in the conventional sense. You know, so many of us, I think we worry about recession because at the the bottom of it all, we don't want to adjust our spending habits, right? We don't want to have to adjust the way we live our lifestyle. And you say this is really what asset allocation is all about. Tell us more. Uh, Megan, I I love how you pose that question because I you know people probably like sh- want to shut off the radio right now when we talk about asset allocation. It's the same old answer to the question about wh- how do you how do you protect yourself in, in retirement? Okay, so so I'd ask all of you, how did that asset allocation work in 2022? It didn't. It failed you. It failed you. Your bond portfolios got crushed. In fact, your long-term corporate bonds were down over 30%. Long-term treasuries over tw- down over 20%. The Barclay bond aggregate, the ag, was down, what is it, 16 18%. Your 60-40 portfolios were down 80, 18%. You had nowhere to hide. Conventional wisdom around asset allocation failed you last year in 2022. When you're retiring, and this is difficult because people have this growth accumulation mindset, right? And, and it's really hard for people to transition to recognize your focus needs to be now on how do I maximize my income, not my growth, right? If I can have six, seven, eight, or 9% withdrawal rates, meaning if I have $2 million when I retire and I'm 65 years old, in the class, we'll show you how to have $160,000 a year of cash flow with zero chance of outliving your income. That's an 8% withdrawal rate. To be able to do that, you got to stop focusing and using conventional wisdom to asset allocation and just focusing on that growth in the accumulation phase. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to just grow your money and have your rental income properties and, 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 and stock pick and market time, if you want to do that, that's fine. You can do it, but you're going to live on your 3 or 4% withdrawal rates. And that is what everybody's going to tell you. That's what Vanguard's going to tell you. That's what Morningstar, Fidelity, Schwab, every advisor you sit down with right now, they're going to tell you 3 or 4%. If you come to our class, we're going to show you how to do take out 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates. But you have to have and accept the fact that you're going to have a few accounts that we call pivot accounts that are not exposed to the market volatility. So that when we have the major market event, Paul, when that major market event occurs, those accounts are never down in value. And I can stop taking money out of my market-based risk investments. I can stop taking money out of accounts that are fluctuating and going down and I can pivot to an account that is not going down and pull my money. So I don't have to change my lifestyle. I don't have to change my income. Nothing has to change other than where I'm withdrawing my money from. And then I can leave my growth portfolios alone. And when the market comes back up, pivot back to them and start withdrawing from them. Paul, this is called sequence of returns risk. We've talked about that a million times. If they don't understand yeah. this, they need to come to class. But maybe yeah. just shed a little light on this. Well, well, well you know, I, I want to, you know, I agree. To, I agree with everything you said, but I actually want to add one more point to it. It's actually somewhat counterintuitive, right? In this way, growth obviously is not the primary goal in retirement, right? It really is about income distribution rather than about growth at all costs. But here's the reality: it's somewhat counterintuitive. Yes, on one hand, you have some accounts that have no market volatility. They're not growing a lot, but they're not, you know, not significant ups and downs. 
in the long run, if you have pivot accounts, at the end of your life, you're going to end up with more anyways. It's counterintuitive, but if you, if you take your distributions from the right accounts, your money actually will grow in the long run more because you're not selling at losses. So in the long run, even though growth isn't the primary goal, your money will grow better if you have the right accounts to take your income. I know that, that sounds counterintuitive, but it's, it's, just math. The, it's, it's math. It's just basic math. It really is, Paul. Last year, if, if, you, if you had your portfolio in a, a growth portfolio, let's let just say your, your portfolio was down 27%, 20, 27, 28% last year, your 60, 40 portfolio, whatever it was, and you pulled out 4 or 5% to live on that year, you're now down 30, 32, 33%. Now you need almost 50% the next year just to break even. And, oh, wait, I have to take another 4 or 5% to live on that year. So I need even more return that year. You can't catch up. This is called sequence of returns risk. It is the number one risk to your retirement plan. Go to our website. We have interactive calculators so you can see the impacts of sequence of returns, volatility, and there's a white paper to explain it more. But this is the number one risk to your retirement. And if you can learn how to navigate and manage sequence of returns risk, you can take out that 6 7 8% withdrawal rates without outliving your money or your income. So I hope this compels you enough to attend one of these eight-hour classes that are being taught at most of the major universities in your area. They're taught in two evenings or one full Saturday, or we're streaming it live from the universities as well. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we want to make sure you're registered for the Foundation's retirement planning courses. These are held at major universities. If you're in the state of Missouri today listening, well, hello. We're glad you're with us. We have so many locations at colleges and universities in Missouri, making it easy for you to attend. Or if you're in Michigan, hello to you as well. We're teaching these at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, and Oakland University. Get registered today. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number to register is 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800-240-8981. And don't forget, you can re-listen to this very show. Maybe you missed something or you want to go back and hear it again, share it with a friend, listen to past episodes. You can do that wherever you find your podcasts. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. We want you to make sure that you're getting every episode so you can stay in the know. We're talking about recessions today and how those could affect your retirement, how to fortify your retirement so that it doesn't negatively impact you. Kirk, you mentioned taxes. I'm trying to understand the relationship here between taxes and recessions. Help us bridge that gap. Well, there's two reasons we want to talk about it today. One is taxes is a major part of of the class that we're teaching. We spend hours talking about how to minimize taxes. And if, if you know what you're doing, if you construct your retirement plan and map it out for 30 years, you can navigate your tax brackets, your taxable portion of Social Security. You can navigate whether your dividends and capital gains are going to be taxable and how much of your required minimum distributions are going to be taxable. Yes, you can manage how much of those dollars you've never paid taxes on, how much taxes you pay you'll have to pay on them. And, it's, it, and, and often it can be zero if you manage this properly. If you do it properly, in fact, the, the plan we teach in the class that we use as an example, we also show it on our website. You can go to the website and you can do a webinar, 30-minute webinar, walking through a retirement plan. You will see that plan saves that particular client five to $600,000 in taxes. So how does it relate to recession? Well, look, 
the less money I have to withdraw to give me the amount of money I need in retirement, the longer my money lasts, the less panic I will get, and the less impact sequence of returns will have on those dollars because I'm pulling out less than if I didn't manage those taxes. You can save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes by knowing when to take income from which accounts at which age to fill brackets, not bump brackets and manage brackets. Paul, this is there are so many strategies around. If you're charitable, if you're charitably inclined and you give to charity, most of you are not getting a deduction for that anymore. We will teach you how to get full deductibility in this class on your charitable giving, whether it's through QCDs or donor advice funds or charitable trust. There are strategies that the wealthy, really wealthy, have been using for many, many years that you can utilize that one to ten million dollar. A retiree out there that's who attends our courses that who that's who tend to listen to our radio show there are strategies you can deploy to minimize the impacts of recession and minimize taxes if you know how when and why but you gotta it, it, start with the education to understand what we're doing yeah sorry sorry to, you know good. you know this actually pertains locally here you know in michigan we have a lot of auto employees right we have a lot of people work in the auto industry a lot of them have pensions, right? And there's always this debate that people go back and forth. Lump sum, do I take the annuity from the company? Lump sum, do I take the annuity from the company? Here's where tax planning is hugely important in the decision over whether you should take a lump sum or not. There's a lot of tax planning that you can do, and we, and we get into it in the class, where if you take the lump sum in the long run, with good tax planning, you could end up with a lot more money, a lot more income. So if you happen to be listening and you're a person who has a pension, and you have the opportunity to take a lump sum, you definitely want to come to the class because one of the key decisions as to whether you take that lump sum has a lot to do with tax planning, and we really get into that in the class. Paul, no one's talking about this. Like, go, go Google this discussion. Go read the articles around take your pension, the annuity pension, or the lump sum. No one... You, it, people are making a decision in a vacuum, in isolation, just looking at, oh, can I recreate the same amount of income? Should I reinsure that if I take the lump sum? Should I put in the money? No one's really talking about the real question. And, and I'll ask you this. Can you Roth convert a pension income stream? No. But can you Roth convert the lump sum that's going to be in an IRA? Yes, you can Roth convert a tremendous amount of that. Can you generate long-term care benefits from your pension? No. Can you generate long-term care benefits from the lump sum? Yes. Can you recreate more insured income from a pension or the lump sum? Right now, the answer for most, for most, all the automotive, GM, Ford, most, is you can recreate a lot more income taking the lump sum. Insured income, guaranteed 120 years, no one's ever lost their money. More secure than the, the pensions that some of the automotives that are self-insuring are doing. So there are so many questions to this that we also address. in the. But, but to, to be able to make that decision, you need to know how to project approximately how much required minimum distributions you're going to have in your mid-70s how much pension income you're going to have in your mid-70s, then be able to calculate what portion of your Social Security is going to be taxable, then be able to calculate your marginal tax rates and your effective tax rates. What are they going to look like in your mid-70s? And right now, none of you can do that. In the class, we're going to teach you to do that so that you can make an accurate decision on what you should be doing right now at 60, 65 years old so that you can minimize the taxes over the next 20, 30 years of your retirement, not just this year or the next three years. So taxes is a major, major component to managing your money in retirement, especially given the nature of recessions and major market events. So attend one of these eight-hour classes. By the way, you can also, if you want to see a, we've done a webinar on lump sum versus pension, and we spent about 40 minutes breaking down the math, showing you the taxes, showing you how to make these decisions. And I think it's worth your time if you're in that in, in that position and you're not sure if you want to go to the class, check out the webinar first. But I'm telling you, you need to come to the class. It's eight hours, master's level course, 200-page textbook, 
All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And there's more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Glad you're with us. Financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler are alongside me today. I'm Megan Mozak, and we're talking about recession today here on the program. Recession in your retirement. We want your retirement to withstand anything that might come against it, including recession. You can get more prepared for retirement by making plans to attend the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are like master's level courses on retirement planning, and they're held appropriately at major universities and colleges. So if you're listening from Missouri, we have several options for you. If you're in Michigan, we are teaching these at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy Campus, or Oakland University. You can call to register 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800-240-8981. Or go online to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Dot org, and you can get your seat reserved. Spots do fill up quickly, so make plans to attend today. Back to the program, and speaking of the program, you can listen again or listen to previous episodes wherever you find your podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour and click subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Kirk and Paul, as we talk about recession today and how that relates to our retirement, this really comes down to planning, doesn't it? It's all about planning. So in anyone that's been listening to our show for a while, you know, the last segment of our shows is usually talking about what do we teach you at at the course and the importance of a real retirement plan, not your e-money or Money Guy Pro or any of those silly white labeled computer generated plans that your advisors and the in the big uh, the big institutions out there are producing. Those are silly. An intern spent 30 minutes putting in your data and spits out a probability of success 30, 40 different ways in these all these graphs. And that's not a plan. OK, so I'm going to describe a plan and then I'm going to let Paul talk about the psychology because this episode's about are we in a recession? What's going to happen when we have a recession? How are you going to behave? So a plan maps out 30 years. Now, mind you, it takes professionals, us, CFPs, CPAs, attorneys, wealth managers, it takes us 50, 60, 70 hours to build one of these plans. All right. So a plan is going to map out for 30 years, every single account that you set up with sub accounts, like buckets within buckets of money for different time frames. So they're different risk profiles allocated differently, depending on when you're going to spend those dollars. Then there's going to be pivot accounts. So that when we have major market events, you can pivot to that account that has no exposure to those negative market events. So you can manage something called sequence of returns risk. And if you manage for 30 years, map this out where you're taking income from, when, how exactly, if you're going to Roth convert, exactly how much to fill brackets, not bump brackets. Try to get into the 12% bracket, which in our private practice All of our clients are between one and 20, most of them one to $20 million. Some of them are more, but many of them are in the 12% bracket. And if you're in the 12% bracket, none of your dividends and none of your capital gains are taxable. That means a smaller percentage of your social security is taxable, saving you hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes over your lifetime. But to do that, you have to map this out and make sure you're taking income from the right accounts at the right age, depending on what the market conditions are, and then mapping out and forecasting your taxes for 30 years so you can find the most efficient path. Now, that's an oversimplified version of what takes eight hours to teach and what a real retirement plan looks like. But if you have that real retirement plan with all the pivot accounts and the insured income that you can never outlive and tax planning and you learn and understand the plan, you understand the levers and you understand what's going to happen when you have a major market event, Paul's going to tell you that is going to change your behavior for the rest of your life so that you don't change your spending patterns. You don't well, panic. Here, here's the challenge, Kirk. Here's the challenge people don't appreciate. If you've not retired yet, you don't know what it's like to not get a paycheck. You do not appreciate the anxiety that happens 
when you don't get a paycheck and you especially don't appreciate the anxiety and fear you're going to feel if you're not getting a paycheck and there's significant market volatility or we end up in a recession. You do not understand what that's going to be like. Here's the reality, right? We are hardwired, folks, right? We are hardwired to either run or fight when we're facing anxiety, right? When we think we're in trouble, we're either going to run or we're going to fight. And most people, when it comes to their money, they want to run, right? That's, that's when they're panicking and they want to run. I, it, Kirk, just to share something, I have a, an acquaintance friend, recently retired. His advisor told him he had an 85%, this is true, 85% chance of a positive outcome that he will not run out of money. Probability success. Probability. Just, if yep, he retires. Silly plan. He retired. He made the decision to retire. Do you think that probability, that 85% is giving him solace right now? Do you think he feels comfortable right now? Guess what he's doing right now? He's not spending. He's not taking his trips. He's not doing all the things he wants to do because he's afraid. Fear, anxiety is hard to fight against. We are hardwired, folks, to run. And that Monte Carlo 85% probability study does not help you. It will not calm you. If we're in the middle of a recession and you're not getting a paycheck, the key is you have to have a plan. You have to see what's going to happen when it happens. Dr. Paul Mettler right there. This is what he studied. He's done tons of research on. He understands behavior, human behavior, particularly for the elderly. That was his specialty. He, I'm telling you, you, you just can't appreciate how you're going to react and respond. And by the way, tell that person you know, Paul, they need to come to a class. Look, I have. we spend I have. in our uh, good. Then they're doing it to themselves. Like a lot of our listeners right now who are refusing to come to this class. It's crazy. What are you going to lose? Eight hours of your time or a donation of $29? It will change your life. Just invest the eight hours, please. Two days, two evenings, or one full Saturday. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register to attend one of these courses, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable. But accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.